I, I think we have to applaud both sides for putting on a, a great football match. But it must be hugely satisfying for you to win this one, Bernardo. Well, yeah, very happy, very happy with uh, with the three points. Very happy because because we qualified in the in the first first of the group, which is very important for us. And very happy as well because our our fans they deserved a good performance, a good win. So yeah, it's just a game, but we're 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 on to the the last 16. Jose, is that winning goal? Talk us through that, and particularly the touch from that man as well. <laughs> uh, thanks for Bernardo, you know. I know his quality, that's why I waited uh, just to finish good, and that's done, that's you know. So I can score, I can come in, help my team, that's what I want to do every game, you know, come to the pitch, help, try to help, and yeah, was a great ball uh, from Bernardo, so I have to score now. <laughs> And of course, you've upstaged your big friend Neymar tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I told him no, I cannot let him play, you know, because I know his quality. I know if I let him go uh, to the goal, well, it's going to be dangerous. So, yeah, I stopped the, the play because, you know, we have to win. That, that first half of Bernardo, some fantastic football pressing and creating. For a while, it looked like it could be the same as the, the game in Paris where you're creating chances but just not taking them. Well yeah it was it was quite frustrating the first half because it felt like we were controlling the game, it felt like we were pressing high, uh, winning the balls, uh, having the possession, but we weren't scoring again. Happily after after the goal we conceded in the beginning of the second half, we the team had a had a great reaction and then we could we could score two goals, uh, which gave us the three points. That's always the threat with this side, isn't it? The counter attack. Well, yeah, you're never safe. You're never safe, even even when you think you're controlling the game. If you give a little bit of space to to Neymar, Messi, Mbappe, Di Maria, it's always going to be tough. They they're always going to create chances, even even if you control the possession. They are always going to create one two chances. Uh, but it's, it's football. It's it's how it is. Uh, we're happy with the win, as I said. And Jason, it's a lot of character to go one down. And then to, to fight back, that shows the character of the side. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, we have a lot of players can can play well, can help the team. You know, uh, I think our power as a team is like this. You know, uh, everyone uh, want to give a good ball to to the <laughs> the another player. So yeah, we go there to try to score, and no one here is selfish. Everyone want to pass the ball and. We win the game. You know, it's the kind of game that wouldn't be, wouldn't make a, a bad final either, will it? <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's always tough to play against this side. Yeah. So yeah, it's I, I imagine it can be exciting for the fans. Thank you, gentlemen. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, congratulations indeed. So Des was talking there about character. We should talk as well about quality. Should we have a look at those two combining for the winner? Yeah, I mean it's a fabulous goal. Um, a lot of what we spoke about before the game uh, materialised. Time and time again, this run, great run from Gundogan, in behind the fullback. But then it's about Mares, who was a, a fawn in this PSG side all game. Beautiful pass, cross, and a disguise here, and a beautiful finish, precision finish. But here, I spoke about it before. This run here is what they've done all game. Midfielders running in behind fullbacks, dragging people away. And that creates a space then for Mahrez when the ball comes out. But we spoke about it before the game. Once the ball goes back to Mahrez here, and you see it. They've got three, three City players, three blue shirts there, overload on the back post. And that space there was apparent all, all game. All game there on either side, getting into those areas. That was what it was about. Getting on the blind side of the defender and this touch. Oh. Touch is unreal, but also the movement from Jesus and there's a lot said about do City need a striker or another striker and it's never going to be come down to how many goals they score, but the type of goals they score. That is a striker's movement, mm. just pulling away from the defenders as everybody tries to, to block the shot on the line. Jesus pulls away, finds the space and not the cleanest of touches, but great goal. Mm. I thought the, I, sorry, Jay, I thought the game changed when Herrera and Idrissa Gay went off because you saw even on that clip there, Danilo's chasing down into that fullback area and that's what I'm saying the midfielders get dragged out Paredes was the only one in the middle of the park so it's you know it puts so much pressure on the midfielders defenders to make the perfect decision and City are just too good you know they pick their spots mm. and we keep on having this conversation about the City need to go and buy a striker play with a number nine 
he has scored a goal in the Champions League every 102 minutes that he's played, Gabriel Jesus. I mean, I think he's, he's underrated. People don't talk about his numbers like yeah, that. Yeah, and I think it's due to... It was coming at a time when Sergio was there. So mm-hmm. there's always going to be that comparison. There's always going to be, well, Sergio's doing this, what is Jesus doing? And I, and I think it's unfair on him. I think um, Sergio was a different kind of specimen in front of goal. And mm-hmm. I think he offers a different contribution, more effective in terms of out of possession as well. And I'll give you another stat for the evening. Bernardo Silva, 47 passes, 47 completed. Mm. He's not, honestly, the, the guy is a false nine. The players play off the right players and number eight players at 10. He's a special player. That's why he's undroppable. Yeah. You know, the guy, to think they're doing this without De Bruyne, without Phil Foden, but when Bernardo's involved, you know, good things happen, that's for sure. Mm. I'll, I'll take you back as well, Sterling. Sterling's goal. And we, when we, this goal, I'm going to stop it for you here. We spoke about it before in terms of switching the play and was such a huge part of the game today. Look at the space here. Tamara's here. He's outside there. No one within any distance of the guy. Huge space. And this ball was on all game. It's a huge key part. I'm sure Pep would have been saying this before the game, in the training sessions beforehand. Get the ball out. Switch. Look how far over that back. Look at the back four. And the thing is as well, we said before the the game, that front three, they just stayed up, didn't they? Yeah. 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 If they transition quickly... This space was free. We said it before, and it, it materialised. And they were—that's the thing they did brilliant today. They moved the ball quickly. Yeah, the space is picked up from Gundogan, Bernardo Silva, in between the centre half and fullback. It was so important to create that space for then the wingers to to play the ball in behind. But here again, it's recognising the space, and Mendes doesn't see Walker at all. Um, overloaded at both sides of the goal. You, I think Pep tries to create a scenario where there's five on the top line and you can see here, if you stop it there, Reed, there's five players there mm. and I just doesn't see Kyle Walker at do, all. Do you know what I like about it as well? I think Pep goes against, he goes against what defenders are told to do. As soon as this ball goes backwards, watch all of these players here. It's only a little shift, but watch all these players here. They step up. They start coming up this way, right? That's what you're told as a defender to do. But the minute they do that, watch Kyle Walker. Here he is here, look. Watch his movement. As soon as the ball goes backwards and he sees the defenders coming up and he makes an absolutely beautiful run into that area. And I love it. Watch this little shift of the defenders. Watch. As soon as it goes backwards, they all start shifting. Even if it's a yard, two yards. That, little off, mo- that movement, you can't reach. Is he reacting recover. because he knows that ball's coming or is he reacting because he's seen the movement of those defenders? I think, I think both. Oh, yeah, I think it's more the... the, the the pattern of play that is created by Man City. I don't yeah. think it's yes. impacted by what Paris Saint-Germain do. I think he knows Rodri's going to get the ball here, the space is here, find me, and, mm. and they will execute that. Mm. I think there's so much detail in that clip alone there, the, the fact that all the boys know their job. They've studied that. So, and Kyle knows if they step up, he, he's off. Gundogan is occupying the line there. They're five in a line. So PSG don't have enough defenders to deal with it. And they know if, if one player doesn't score, somebody else is. It's, it's actually... It's, it's a joy to watch them play football because it's just, it's, it's unique. And we could have picked out probably eight to ten clips like that throughout this game. And that tells you one thing, they're coached well and you're seeing patterns on a regular basis and the players are tuned into it. No accident when you see goals like that in this team. What are you thinking then about City having a chance to finally, finally lift the trophy that's eluded them so far? There's been some brilliant teams in this competition. Yeah, and I think that's the case. I think it's early to say, yes, he played well tonight. I think it sets a tone through that the Champions League, a fear, um, psychologically fear throughout the Champions League that City can perform like this. And if they do, they're hard to beat. But I don't think you can gauge it just yet. I think we, we, you get to that stage of the, the season. Manchester City moved back to second in the Premier League after a stylish 3-0 win over Everton at the Etihad Stadium on Sunday as Pep Guardiola's side responded to convincing Chelsea in Liverpool wins with a reminder of their class. Champion City dominated possession from the start against an Everton side that struggled to get a foothold in the game, but created few real openings in the opening half hour. Guardiola was left frustrated when a penalty was awarded after Raheem Sterling went down under challenge from Michael Keane, but referee Stuart Atwell overturned his decision after reviewing the incident at the pitch side monitor. Sterling did put City ahead a minute before the break, side footing home after a magnificent pass, struck with the outside of his foot by fullback Joao Cancelo. Spanish midfielder Rodri made it 2-0, with a thundering long strike from over 20 metres out that whistled past Everton keeper Jordan Pickford. Sterling missed a great chance to end the contest, but miscontrolled the ball in front of goal after a low cross from Riyad Mahrez. 
Cole Palmer, the 19-year-old making his first Premier League start, had set Mares through for that opportunity, and it was his blocked shot was pounced on by Bernardo Silva, who calmly slotted home the third. We gave rhythm into our game, they defended really well, so deep, playing, on the counter-attack. In general we controlled the game. We played the game we should play to beat teams like Everton, Guardiola said. When one team comes just to defend it is always going to be difficult, and you have to be careful. The quality of the players we have made the difference, he added. Chelsea lead the table on 29 points, with City three points behind and Liverpool one further back in third. Rafa Benitez's Everton are without a win in six games and are 11th on 15 points.